Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman. And over there is John Lewandowski. Today, the Nashville Predators took on the Minnesota Wild. But before we get into that, our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. They will all fit you with all your hockey needs. But as I said, today the National Predators took on the Minnesota Wild. Now, if we all remember, the, the Wild smacked us around a little bit back in November and, and injured Carrier. So, um, for those who remember that. So, at this time, I will turn it over to John so that he can give you the stat line. <laughs> All right. So, shots on goal in the first period. Nashville outshoots Minnesota 11-6. to In the second period, Minnesota outshoots Nashville 11-4. to in the third period, Nashville outshoots Minnesota 13 to 7. And in total, Nashville outshoots Minnesota 28 to 24. Minnesota was better at a face-off circle tonight at 51.7% to the Predators 48.3%, but still pretty close. Uh, Nashville goes 0 for 2 on the power play with 20 penalty minutes, while Minnesota goes 2 for 4 with 26 penalty minutes. Nashville out hit Minnesota 23 to 13. Minnesota out blocked Nashville 20 to 15. Minnesota had eight giveaways to Nashville's three, and Minnesota had nine takeaways to Nashville's three. Scoring in the first period, there was nothing. Scoring in the second period for Minnesota was Erickson X scoring his 21st of the year on the power play at the 12.54 mark, assisted by Kaprizov, his 25th, and Zuccarello, his 29th. Ben scoring in the third on a wrist shot at the 1.44 mark was Alexander Carrier with his fourth with an assist from Yakov Trenin, his third. Then... So that knotted it up. Then Phil Forsberg scored his 23rd on a tip. Uh, that was literally at the 219 mark. So literally seconds later. Yeah. Um, with an assist from Roman Yossi, uh, who I believe made the initial shot. Um, and O'Reilly. Uh, Yossi's 32nd, O'Reilly's 24th. Uh, then Yossi gets... Uh, wrist shot goal at the 11.34 mark with his 10th. Assisted by Gustav Nyquist, his 25th. And O'Reilly, his 25th. That, uh, uh, go ahead. Okay. Then at the 16.09 mark on a wrist shot for Minnesota on the power play, Boldy scores his 16th of the year, assisted by Faber, his 25th, and Kaprizov, his 26th. In for the National Predators was UC Saros, who had a very good game for of, for, of what he's been doing lately. <coughs> 22 saves on 24 shots with a 91.7 save percentage. In net for the Wild was Gustafson. He stopped 25 of 28 with an 89.3 save percentage. Um, the Preds only had one shot on the power play. The three stars of the game, third star of the game was Joel Eric Sadek with a goal. Um, second star of the game was O'Reilly. He had two assists, and Yossi, who had a goal and assist, was the number one star. Your referees were Garrett Rank and ugh, just Lon Hebert. Um, Matt McPherson and Michael Corbier were the Lions' persons. 
Um, we had a uh, Bogosian and McCarran fight. And then we had a Bogosian. How'd Bogosian get in two fights and under? Oh, I'm sorry, Middleton had a fight. But that would go. So McCarran had one. Ah, the, the fight against Craig Smith. Bogosian got um, two minutes for instigating, a five minute major, and a game misconduct. Or a ten, yeah, a 10 minute misconduct. So, oh, yeah. Um, what's your thoughts on the Preds only having one shot on the power play? Eddie? Uh, well, obviously, you got to get more on that than one. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I, I You know I wasn't able to watch, but I listened, so. Um, yeah, but... you, glad you got to listen to the Preds feed, because, unfortunately, I was stuck watching the Wild feed, where all they did was complain about Nashville. Ah, uh, okay. So, for those of you who live in the Wisconsin area, you know that Minnesota's probably got one of the best radio guys today. He was off his game. He was very biased. Not a fan of that. I don't like bias. You're TV people. You're not supposed to be biased. Right. You're supposed to call it down the middle. I, radio guys can be biased. TV guys, no. People can see what you see. You know? You know? Um, you know, uh, really? <coughs> Be in the pain today, huh? Edmonton continues the streak. Um, they have now won. Fourteen in a row. <sighs> that Metropolitan Division looks a little uh, messy. Yeah. Minus Columbus. If the Sharks win two more games, they will pass the Blackhawks for worst team in the league. Okay. The Blackhawks are three and seven in their last ten. Um, that says something for me about them a lot given that they thought that they were going to be contenders going into this year. Right. Uh, going and getting Taylor Hall, bringing in Bedard as the number one. 
I think they thought they were going to get a little more out of him. Um, he had to have surgery, so he had to miss six weeks, had to wait three to get the surgery. Now he's had the surgery, and you're talking six weeks from now, six weeks from now. Roughly, you're far talking maybe the first two weeks of, of March. Yeah. So they're done. In my opinion, send him back to World Juniors. Let him take what he's learned this year and move on. Actually, they can't without putting him through waivers. That's right. Oh, um, my! Then my opinion would be: wait till the junior season's over and send him to send him to Rockford. Rockford fans hearing me say that would jump for fucking joy. And I'm sorry, I swear, but that's literally how they would be. <laughs> like, there's no way around that word, but <laughs> they 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 would be they would be swearing. There there's only one thing that would come to mind when I if I saw that, and that's the holy F. Yo, so that that frowned upon word. But um you know, um, what do you think this does for the Preds' confidence? They they beat um, Minnesota, who was a thorn in their side early on in the season. Um, yeah, I mean, I think their confidence is pretty high right now. They've been playing well. And, and that's the funny part because I think their confidence is, is is from the scoring. So they they got three, you know. Um, we'll see where that goes. Um, if you had no okay. Um, also, for those of you Preds fans, this weekend, AHL TV is free. The Admirals take out the Ice Hogs on Friday and the Wolves on Saturday. So you guys have all weekend, thanks to it being the 50,000th AHL game this weekend, AHL TV will be free. Oh, watch for free on the 27th. <coughs> Which is Saturday. Yeah. So you can watch the Admirals versus the Wolves in Chicago for free. Well, the Wolves have been on a little bit of a hot streak too lately. Um... So uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about is uh, Jankowski's third in points right now in the AHL. Okay. Um, he's fourth in assists. Um, he's second in plus minus, uh, and Igor is fifth. Because I'm only looking at the top five in points. Um. What's your thought on that for Jankowski on that? Um, I think it's good. Samuel Fajibo has 20 goals with Ontario in 24 games. 24 goals, 13 assists, 33 points. In 22, 24 games this season. Um, just so you know, Yarrow's also fifth in wins. Uh, third in goals against average and fifth in save percentage. Okay. <clears throat> so he has 15 wins. Um, Cleveland has him at, at Tucson. Their goalies have 19. Hunter Shepard has 16 along with Dustin Wolf. Um, his Goals against average is 2.19, which, <laughs> that's really good. Yeah. And it's a percentage is at a 92.1, uh, 92.1 save. Um, 
I'm just going to do standard percentages instead of doing the zero point. Do a standard percentage. It's it's literally ninety two point one. Like the next, the good one is ninety two two, ninety two three, ninety two nine, and then ninety three nine. So I mean, you're talking about being in lines with Hershey's goalie, Calgary's goalie, like. All the goalies are, are East Coast um, there, uh, minus Wolf, who's in Calgary. Well, no, Bangersfield is. So, so you got two there and one Central Division goalie. Um, Josh Doan has the lead for game-winning goals at seven. That's uh, Shane's kid. Uh, assists, former Admiral Matt Donovan is at 30. He's he's ahead of uh, Jankowski by two. Um, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to something, so we're just going to go this route. Yeah, I figured Zach LaRue is, has 130 penalty minutes in 34 games with 10 goals, 16 assists, 20 points, and a plus 10. That is not indicative of the, of how he has played, obviously. Right. Um, you think about it, uh, LaRue has faced the wrath of the referees kind of cracking down on players drawing back to them this year. Yeah. Which I honestly think that Abuse of an official can't be just the word fuck. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, but it's a, it's a common word in hockey. Watch a warm-ups once and see a guy ring a shot off the post and then lip read. During warm-ups. I'm talking about during warm-ups. I'm not even talking about during the game. I'm talking about during warm-ups. Watch a guy ring a shot off a post and then watch it and then lip read. You know, um, our shows are not kid friendly, anyways. Never have been. Um, you know, so uh, do you think um the Preds have what what it takes to just sustain where they're at right now with um with the deadline looming? And we're kind of bottom of the, you know? Yeah. I mean, hopefully they can sustain it. Um, I, I mean, and that, that's the funny part because, I mean, obviously, you have a franchise goalie in Charles who's having a down year. If somebody comes in with a deal and knocks your socks off, go for it. All right. Like, if LA comes in and goes, we'll give you – Two first round picks, our backup goalie, Quentin Byfield and Kalia for Saros and Fabro. I'll take it. Yeah. I'm 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 taking it. Um but my my and, and, and my personal opinion is trade Barry back to the back to Edmonton and go get uh, Broberg. Broberg wants out of there. Broberg's in the A. You could you could call up stats then, you know, you could call up Del Gaizo. Um that opens up some room here because we're kind of long jammed at defense. We don't know what Matir and Prokop and Griffin Luce can do because there's a log jam in Milwaukee in defense. On def as a defenseman. Like if I was a defenseman and I want and I was young and I was gonna be I was drafted by Nashville right now I would not want to come in and play in this system. 
Not not because it's not that it's well coached or not any of that. It's just that I don't think I would get the ice time that I would want. That would be like <laughs> for my development as a young player. You know, um then you also got Keaton Thompson too. Yeah. So and and Thompson's got two points in two games. I don't understand why we're not playing anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just give him the random game every once in a while when we need a goal. <laughs> right. Goal. Um. You know, but uh, I I honestly think like you know, there's gonna be some moves. There's gonna be some shakeups. There's gonna be some changes. And and you know, we're gonna have to roll with it. Um. The Admirals are our team. Nashville's our team. Um, we're, you know, we're in it through the good and through the bad, no matter what. It's kind of like being a, you know, you're, you're a diehard at that point. You know, we're in it no matter what. So it's it's tough sometimes when, when it's losing. And it, 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 it you know, it's hard to get on camera here and talk about losses, you know, um, because when they're consistent losses, they're, you know, when they're happening frequently. Right. And I, I just think that the Preds were a little snake bitten and then that puck needed to go in the net a little bit. So three goals today. Um, I don't like to see like four or five. Not not just from like a fan perspective, but like a coaching perspective, just to, hey, we got four. We got, you know, we got, we were able to roll the lines. We were able, you know, get going, you know. Um, That's that's one of those things where, you know, you, as a coach, you want to be able to roll four lines. You want to roll all three defensive pairings. You want to get your goalie comfortable, make sure he's making the good saves, make sure you can see everything. You know, um, there's right. certain things that you do. Um, Milwaukee does it very well. Um, Yarrow has won his last 10. Um, I think without Yarrow's injury, I think that we would have been a little bit in a better position. But that injury kind of set him back a little bit. Grosnick held the fort down, and, and they, they we played very well. Um. If at any point Yarrow does have to go up for a long period of time, Milwaukee is okay with Grosnick. Um, Grosnick uh, this year so far, I haven't. My keyboard is being weird. Grosnick is 12th of the league with a 91.3 save percentage. Uh, or goals against, you know, save percentage. Goals against average is 2.66. Um, Uh, gross Nick this year is 10 and 3. Uh, Yarrow is 10, 6, and 1. Uh, the first few games were a bit rough for him. Um, but it's it's interesting. He's he's been kind of a hot hand lately. Yeah. I can see Grosnick playing Friday, though. Well, they're going to want Yarrow up against Chicago. Chicago's been playing hot lately. Um, we'll see what happens there. Uh, upcoming for the Admirals as well, there's a uh additional game coming up on Tuesday. Uh their hockey is for everyone night. 
Um, the Admirals are taking on the San Diego Dolls, who are five and four in their last ten. Um, Alex Daylock is their starting goalie. Uh, hey, Jeff Glass is their goalie, goalie coach. Hey, Glass, I have a puck of yours from Rockford. Um, I donated some money to their autism foundation and got a signed puck when I was in Rockford uh, a few years back. <coughs> um, I wanted to donate the puck back so that they could, you know, make more money, but they wouldn't let me. Um, but no, uh, the uh, fun part for us now is um, Admirals game tomorrow, double on Saturday. Um, there may be a delay on Saturday's show, John, just letting you know. I'll get into that with you afterwards. All right. But I'm letting them know ahead of time as well. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I believe Saturday is the, uh, WWE Royal Rumble, if I remember correctly. And that is something that I always watch. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of that company, but the Rumble I always watch. It, it shows you the direction they're going for WrestleMania. So those are the, I watch the big ones, the, you know, the big four, as they call it. Um, but yeah, with that coming up, they uh they don't really have a whole lot there in in uh San Diego. But Andrew Agazito is no stranger to Ab Admiral's fans. Um, we're no stranger to him, along with Trevor Carrick and Staylock. So we'll we'll see where that goes down the line. Um, this weekend. Uh, Okay, so San Diego's in Iowa this weekend, and Texas is in Coachella. Hey, Coachella, you mind giving us a hand? Um, if the Admirals can pick up in whatever their extra game against Texas is, uh, they would have a 10-point lead. The Admirals right now to third place have a twelve point lead. Um Manitoba is O nine and one in their last ten. And they're all 10 and 1 in their last 11. I'm actually surprised by that. Yeah. Um, the Wolves are five out of five game winning streak. Grand Rapids is on a five game point streak. Or th sorry, four game point streak. Um Texas uh Admirals are on an eight game win streak, knock on wood. Um so uh, we'll see what's going on there. But uh, good to see the Preds back in the wing column. That's a definite good sign for them. Um, they needed the confidence. They needed the boost. Um, for the last few games, it's been – and, and I'm going to say this. Those teams were very good hockey teams. Yeah. It's, it's not like they're dropping games that they should win. They're dropping games that you expect them to lose. You expect them to be a little better than they are, but you know, um, it's a new first year with a new head coach, first year with a new GM, first year with about a halfway new team, all new system. It's it's a change. It's a culture shift. Um, and I do think that they still like to play that hard nosed hockey, but they like to play it with speed. Right. I, I I truthfully believe that. Don't 
don't don't step away from what has worked in the past for this organization. Um, but like I said, uh, you know, uh, seeing uh, Trenning get get a point that was great. Trenning's been snake bitten. You know, um, fans have been called for his head, much like Soros and everyone else. Um, fans here in Milwaukee call for Yarrow's head every game. Whether we win or lose, we can get a shut up and they'd find something to complain. Just being truthful. You know who you are. So, you know, that's that's that. Uh, do you think that the NHL trade deadline is going to be big this year? Possibly. All right, because right now the bold – not right now. The bold predictions are – uh, the Kings get Jake Allen from the Montreal. The Leafs acquire Chris Tenev from the Flames. Uh, the Devils trade for John Gibson from the Ducks. Um, I, I, I honestly don't know. Um, the Avalanche land Elias Lindholm. Um, it is a one-year deal, but he carries a cap hit of four point nine million. Um, and the Penguins re-signed Jake Kinsel. Um, the latest rumors are that Columbus will try to trade Elvis versus Lincolns. Um, uh, Jacob Chickren's on the trade block for um, Ottawa. Um, Sorrow's being traded. Um, Mark Andre Fleury being traded. Um, we all know where we'd like to see him go. Um, not that I'm keen on him going back to Pittsburgh, but I think that's where we would all like, you know, for him to end it. Yeah. Um, you know, many guys don't get the opportunity to do that. You know, um, not many guys are, are Mark andre Fleury either. Right. <sighs> the return for Mark andre Fleury is still going to be hefty. Um, and with the look of the wild right now, I, I, I just don't, you know, I'm not saying that uh, it's it's impossible, but there's there's a, their their playoff chances are running slim. Right. And the Preds got to be careful because the Blues are coming in hot lately. And uh, I'm actually quite surprised by that. Um, you know, um, Nashville and Fabro. Um, I do think it's time for Fabro to go. I think uh, he's not a fit for this system. Um, I, I just don't see it. There's a couple things that need to be changed around a little bit. Um, I think guys like Gross deserve a good ch chance in the NHL instead of sitting here getting, you know, 40 points in the A every year but never getting a shot in the end. All right. Um, 
But you know, I mean, here's the thing. And 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 I'm gonna say this because a lot of people when when it comes down to the trade deadline and guys have to go up when they trade guys up there and you know, Nash and 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 how do I put this? The AHL fans go, they're stealing our guys. They're not ours. We don't own them. Matter of fact, you should be happy. Because it's another notch on our belt. We've done our job. Our job is to draft, is that their job is to draft. Our job is to develop. We do that very well. We make two-way hockey players who produce points. Guys like Colton Sissons, guys like your your Yakov Trenins, your Tanner Genodes, <coughs> those guys came through this system. Look at Shea Weber, Roman Yossi, uh, Ryan Ellis, Matthias Ekholm, uh, 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 Kimu Timonen, um, uh, Dan Hamhuis, um, Z uh, Greg Zanin, who played for the Avalanche for quite a few years before bouncing back to their AHL for the rest of his career. Um, yes, I'm fully aware of what our system has done defensively. We also have a bunch of those guys who we have a rising star in Milwaukee as uh, Spencer Statsny. Seems to always rise to the occasion. Been playing really good on the penalty kill this year. Um, what has five points shorthanded? Something right. like that. Uh, between him, Igor, that you know, like Igor. Igor's another one. Igor deserves a chance. Right. Like, like a steady chance. Right. You know, where he can be in the lineup every day. I, I honestly think that right now, this is the time where you start going up, down, up, down with guys. And just giving them that, like, time on the ice. Time on the end. Here's what the NHL is like. Get ready for this. Yeah. I, I, I honestly think that right now is the time for that, where you can get your veterans or a guy who's a little shaky and get him a night off. Right. You know, call up a guy. You have the roster spot open, so you can, you know, if a guy's a little banged up, if you got a couple bruises, you want him to heal to be 100, you know, those kinds of things. I, I honestly think that that's Nashville's route right now. Um, uh, if, if 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 I were GM, but that's if this is Barry Trotz's call. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, I called Parson in getting sent um, to Milwaukee, so now we're gonna call that either Igor or Stastny is gonna be the one going up. Right. So um, uh, we got about thirty seconds. So thank you for watching. This is <laughs> from Milwaukee to Nashville, brought to you by Hockey Locker. I'm Jerry Goodman, John Lewandowski over there, signing off.